But transporting liquid by ship brings another challenge, stopping it from sloshing. And engineers have two liquids to worry about on these tankers. On the way out, they have a cargo of liquid gas, and on the return journey, when it's empty, they carry water as ballast to stabilize the ship. The same problem in two different forms. If a liquid cargo starts to wash around on a ship, it can be a real problem. Basically, when window waves rock the ship itself, that can send the liquid sloshing from side to side in the tanks. That motion can build, emphasizing the rocking of the ship itself, and, well, it can be disastrous. It's called the free surface effect. I set out to discover just how bad it can be. And yeah, given my driving record, I am, well, perhaps more than a little nervous. Only a bit. Right, what I have here is a van, perfectly ordinary, apart from the massive tank fitted into the back, containing water, a lot of it. Water that's free to slosh about. So what I'm looking to experience is, for myself, first-hand, the free surface effect. The free surface is literally the area available for a liquid to slosh around freely. And just in case it does affect the van, I'm securely harnessed inside a roll cage. First, I took it slowly, to ensure just a little bit of sloshing. As I turn into the corner, obviously the water wants to stay where it is and sloshes off to the right. Ooh, it does, yes, it, it is sort of affecting the way it feels. If I go this way, and then this way, it doesn't feel. Ooh. Yeah, it's sloshy. I can feel it suddenly jerk the vehicle in a direction other than the one in which I want it to go. I don't know whether it's me driving or the tank of water. That's a strange feeling. Time to step on it and imagine our ship and its liquid cargo rolling through stormy seas. Well, step on it as much as I can in a van. Water go, it's very unpleasant. Yeah, that didn't go as well as it might have done. As I corner, the momentum of the slosh capsizes my little van. Yeah, that is the free surface effect. As it turns out, it's deeply uncomfortable. Scale my tumble up to a whole ship, and disaster ensues. In 1987, the free surface effect capsized the Herald of Free Enterprise ferry when water gushed in through doors that had accidentally remained open, and almost 200 people died. Liquid natural gas tankers have a surprising solution to this problem. To reduce the free surface area, the gas tanks are spherical, like great big balls. There's less room for sloshing, as long as the tank is full or nearly empty. These tankers fill up with cargo, 98%. Set off, make a long journey get there and discharge it, or nearly all of it, keeping back just enough to use as fuel for the journey home. So the tank, in normal circumstances, is either almost entirely full or almost entirely empty. No sloshing. Empty of cargo, the tanker would ride high in the sea. To lower it, water is pumped into ballast compartments in the hull beneath the gas tanks. Space doesn't allow these compartments to be spherical, so preventing sloshing here calls for a different solution. Rewind to World War II. Bombing raids kept British firefighters busy. They used a tanker lorry carrying almost 4,000 litres of water. 
The free surface effect made it dangerous to drive. By contrast, modern fire engines hurtle around without overturning. And that is thanks to baffles. Not as in confusion, but load dividers. These are physical barriers, first introduced in the 1880s to stop oil tankers capsizing. Obviously, what led to my slight incident there was the free surface effect allowing the water to slosh from side to side, and it brought the whole van over. So the key ones here in my baffles are these longitudinal ones that stop the water going from side to side. Apparently, this works. Find out. Seems okay. And just as they keep the van stable, baffles also protect tankers from capsizing. Dividers in those ballast compartments under the gas tanks stop the water from sloshing around. No free surface effect. Surprisingly, they don't use baffles in the gas tanks. One reason is because friction could heat up the cargo, turning it back into gas. And you wouldn't want that. Empty or full, these ships are stable.